hello and welcome to the AFS Technologies Monthly Learning Series. Thank you to all for joining us today. My name is Ian Faith and I will be hosting today's session entitled Warehouse Improvements Using AFS WMS Increase in Accuracy and Efficiency. In today's webinar, John Rubber of Scarvuzos will talk with AFS's Jordan Bullington. They'll talk about how Scarvuzos address the challenges of increased accuracy and efficiency in their warehouses. John will talk about how they train new employees and get them up to speed fast. As transparency becomes an integral part of the global food supply chain, companies are being required to maintain detailed and up-to-date reports on their warehouse inventory. Warehouses need to be able to report on where their products came in from, when products arrived, they need to know where products are after they leave the warehouse. Their staff need to be trained to manage these requirements. Today's warehouse has to be able to turn product efficiently and accurately, accounting for all its inventory to keep date-sensitive product from sitting too long on the dock and missing its place in the rotation. For perishables, this is of the utmost importance. John? Jordan, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedules to join me today. You're welcome. And John, have we got you there as well? Yes, I'm here. Excellent. Well, John Rubber is the Director of Operations at Scarvuzos Incorporated. He has 12 years experience in food service from IT to operations and finance. He started loading trucks in college for a poultry company in South Georgia and since has worked with multiple companies all over the country in every area of our industry. Scarvuzos is an independent food service supplier currently in its fourth generation of family ownership. They focus on more wholesome, honest approach to the complicated food service industry. Their distribution footprint extends out of Kansas City, Missouri to Texas, Colorado, Illinois, Louisiana, Iowa, Mississippi, and, ne and Nebraska. Jordan Bullington is the Director of Supply Chain Support at AFS Technologies. He has five years of operation and technical experience implementing over 20 customers on AFS software and leading support groups for WMS, OMS, and ERP solutions at AFS. Jordan brings an operational background to the table as he has experienced many diverse business practices and understands the direct impact between software solutions and successful business practices. He understands the importance of supporting our customers, continuing to improve processes and ensuring product quality and features are always improving to exceed the needs of our present and future clients. And that is what Being Purpose Built is all about. On the screen, you'll see a bit of a history about Scarvuzos. And many years ago in the old country, one's ambition and destiny was one's family trade, the family trade that kept the family alive and a town flourishing. Call it nostalgic or old fashioned, we love that side of our history and we love what we do. And then I've got a slide in here as well so you can actually see more of the Scarvuzo family history. It's a, it's a great story. So, John, Jordan, I will turn it over to you for warehouse improvements using AFS WMS increase in accuracy and efficiency. Thanks, Ian. Can we go to the, the next slide? That's it. So John, can you talk a little bit about uh, how long it would take to receive, let's say, a 25-line purchase order before you were using a WMS, and then maybe talk a little bit about you know, how long it took um, after you implemented a WMS? Sure. So um, we're a heavy protein house, so we, we have um, you know lot control issues, we have catch weight, we have standard weight, um, and one of the biggest concerns that we had from the, the doc standpoint was, you know, adding all the catch weights up for items that didn't come across on the manifest and, you know, getting the, ac the accurate lots recorded and making sure that, you know, we tracked each individual lot into the slot or to the overstock location. So manually capturing all of that data on pieces of paper and making sure that paper got to accounting or got to the warehouse management staff or getting to where they had to get, you know, where they had to go was extremely time-consuming. Um, 
we would probably own a 25 line of order with one of our major beef suppliers. We would be close to an hour, um, making sure we had the right product, making sure the dates were within um, uh, tolerance, making sure the lot codes were something we could accept, and you know, et cetera. Um, after the WMS's implementation, you know, being able to scan the G10 uh, directly into the system and not only capturing code dates, uh, lot numbers, and uh, manufacturers right there on the spot from one scan, I mean, as fast as we can pull the pallets off of the truck, we can digest them and, and put them into our system. So, I mean, 100 <laughs> percent, it, it really reduced the amount of time and, and the amount of paperwork and the amount of hands that had to touch a receiving order to, to, to get it in. Exactly, and you kind of touched on this a, a little bit just a second ago, but uh, can you go into a little bit of as far as what type of information um, you currently track on the inbound orders and on the inbound order lines when uh, when using a WMS? Sure, so the first question that we have on the WMS is the temperature of the trailer that we're receiving the product from, so we have a record of that. Um, now that's either done by most carriers nowadays have onboard uh, temperature control or temperature reporting modules. Uh, we do have a um, an infrared gun that we also use to collect that data. So temperature control, we uh, we also collect the the lot number that's associated with the product. We control uh, the manufacturer code date, reception date, um, depending upon you know different mixes of products have different requirements like. Dairy may have a you know an expiration date, whereas beef has a rotation or a um, a reception date you know for expiration. Um, I think the interesting the interesting thing that we see now with uh, with the introduction of G10 is is being able to eliminate uh, not only user error but uh, manufacturer's error, where they're sending maybe one or two of the wrong products in a load, and so scanning those into the system, we're able to find those at time of reception and reject or um, make the purchasing department aware of that instead of waiting till you know we either incur a misfix or a misrotation on on a wrong product. Yeah, great, great examples. Can you talk a little bit to um, you know what were some of the, the major issues that um, you used to see when uh, when you'd receive on paper? Yeah. Uh, First calculation, first off, was it 25 cases, 26 cases, 22 cases? You know, we get, I'd get a discrepancy from our accounts payable department that says, okay, their billing is 24 cases, your reception receiving manager said 22 cases, uh, which one is it? There was really no justifiable way to go back and say, oh, it was for sure 24 or 22 short pay them or overpay them um, based on what we actually received. Whereas in the WMS system, for instance, we can go back and since those products were assigned to license plates, even if they're out of our facility, we are able to run an audit on that license plate and see that it was tracked all the way to the overstock location, into the pick, who touched it, uh, you know, when they touched it, how many they touched, and you know, you can get that, you can get those answers to those questions from a reconciliation standpoint. Yeah, and, and of those issues that um, you, know, you used to see while receiving on paper, um, how did the WMS help resolve those? Well, from the reconciliation, it does the math for you. So it basically, once you scan the products and there's the quantities, it'll it'll um, it'll compare that to the uh, to the RO and or the PO, and you know, well, make you verify that you know you did short. So, for instance, if you accidentally typed in a number that wasn't correct, it would it, it prompts you to go back and double check and and verify that you know what what you said was right is correct. Um, like I said, the wrong products in the, uh, the in the protein world. There's a lot of uh, very similar products with terrible descriptions. <laughs> Anybody in the protein is probably laughing right now because the descriptions are just draconian at this point. But the manufacturer numbers are always going to be a, a nice, uh, unique way to identify you know most products. So being able to verify that what we said we were, was on the RO is what we're actually receiving is huge in our industry. Um, that and the catch weights, you know, making sure that the uh, the total gross weight ties out, and you know, we've caught some suppliers and shippers, uh, you know, adding in pallet weights and and not using you know proper business etiquette when it comes to you know selling per pound items, and I mean it's it's this whole ball of things just run so much more smooth, and there's so much data that's collected, being able to reconcile and go back under any circumstance and and tell where you know your products have been or how many or 
or uh, whatever answer you're trying to, you know, question you're trying to answer. Yeah, I, I agree 100 percent there. Stephen, can, can you go to the next slide? <clears throat> and so uh, this topic that we're going to go over is talking about uh, you know, keeping accurate inventory levels uh, within your four walls. And you know, John, can you talk a little bit about um, you know, what were some of the biggest pain points that you had um, before you had a WMS and, and in regards to managing your inventory? Well, I think there was really for us two main major pain points. And like most people in the industry, when you get down to less than five cases in a, in a slot, you know, your, your sales force is either going to completely rely upon that and trust that that slot, that order is going to be fulfilled, or they're going to say, you know, anything under five cases, I'm not even going to make that sale. Um, so we've absolutely seen an increase in, in, um, in sales when it comes to items that we have short short amount of, uh, of quantity on hand. And I think the other part of that is uh, the traceability of the product. So when there is an inventory issue, let's say those five did not exist, there's audit reports, there's lock controls, there's there's all these uh, tools that we have access to now with WMS that allow us to go back and, and trace back why exactly do those five cases not exist? Who was the last person to touch them? Was it a mispick? Was it a misrotation? Were they damaged? You know, we can you can really start to answer those hard questions that I think everyone in the industry has, especially when it comes to you know low on hand quantities. <clears throat> um, as far as our inventory control process goes, our inventory control manager with WMS now has um, an aggressive cycle counting scale. So he has a, a tool now that he can monitor how he's doing, you know, currently for us, we count in our entire facility every quarter. We, that's our goal is to have every aisle and every slot counted um, every quarter in a rotation basis. Um, just for instance, we had our bank um, come down at the beginning of the year for an audit since we aren't, we're not doing physical inventories any longer. Um, and we had less than $5,000 variance on about $4 million of inventory. So when you're talking about tightening up the noose and the day-to-day -day operations of what happens uh, and the loss of product, I mean, 5,000 on 4 million is, is, a, is a pretty significant, uh, accurate inventory. Yeah, you know, I'd like to touch a little bit on, you know, something you said there of how you, you, you know, went away with complete wall-to-wall -wall physical inventories. And I think living in a paper world, that's very common. Um, to, to do wall-to-wall -wall inventories on a monthly, quarterly basis, but, you know, you, using a WMS allows you to do, you know, count the problem slots, the problem products, and it, and it points out, um, you know, where the problems lie in the warehouse so you don't have to count to the slots and the products that aren't giving you grief or aren't giving you discrepancies. You just, you know, basically you don't have to spend all the man hours every month counting every single slot. It's just on an as-needed basis or, you know, in an incremental way. Absolutely. So it's it's managing by exception, not not the rule, right? That's That's what we're all trying to get to. Let's let's deal with the problem issues and let's you know trace back and, and figure out why exactly these problems or operator. I mean we we've actually established in a few cases an operator was not you know trained properly and wasn't doing the replenishments and and you know without that without that audit that traceability to go back to to understand who's moving what. There's really there's really no other way to come to that conclusion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and after implementing WMS, can you talk about how this made the, the buyers, um, the salesmen, and the, the warehouse employees' jobs easier and, and more effective? Well, the buyers, for sure. So um, right now, our inventory reception, uh, our, our, our O job runs every 10 minutes. So from our purchasing department, and we actually have three facilities that we uh, we have um, that we utilize reception at, um, and our buying uh, department is centralized. So no matter what facility actually receives the RO within 10 minutes, they, they have an accurate, you know, short or over or, or what, what actually happened with that RO. So as you're managing lines, and I, I'm not purchasing, so I can't really speak to their uh, to their job title as much, but I, I do know there's a significant uh, amount of efficiencies that have been gained and trust in the fact that the items were scanned into our system, were put away by this person, and for certain, you know, we were shorted or overed or, or whatever the case may be. So that allows the, the purchasing department to be more almost proactive in the fact that they can call the manufacturer while the product is on the dock or right after the reception and, you know, facilitate the back, back order fill or the sending back of product. <laughs> When they send us the wrong or there's damages, we can we can handle that. Why the LTL uh, or 
the shipper is still still at the uh, the dock. We can make sure that you know, we can get it back to them or, or whatever to, you know whatever the solution is going to be. We handle that real time instead of reactively a few days later, so on and so forth. Like I think a lot of people, including ourselves, were we were in that boat. Yeah, great examples. Well, let's talk about you know, how does a WMS better equip your team with, with handling rotation and close to code items. Uh, so uh, we look at it in kind of waves. So we implemented the core functionality of WMS, which is replenishment, reception, and, you know, so on and so forth. We're now in the last few weeks have gotten really heavy into misrotation. So where we're picking license plates that are uh, younger than that we have, you know, we have older product existing in the in the warehouse. So we're running that report to verify that you know the, that we're not skipping over uh, license plates or lots. Um, and then the short coded, uh, there's a report in WMS that comes out and you specify the shelf life in which you'd like to see your products. Uh, so basically, I want to see something in my, all products in my warehouse that are going to expire in the next 14 days. So our inventory control and quality assurance department gets gets that list together and sends it out to sales and purchasing and marketing, and we're able to be more effective. You know, do we need to? give this product away at cost or you know can we donate it or is this a recurring issue is this the same manufacturer sending us you know close date items all those questions can be be answered by you know just a few reports uh, dumped into excel with some some basic analytic analytics you know thrown against them um, right now we're having a a really big push or in the in, in the um, process of installing OMS the order management system and our uh, goal going forward is to put all of our short coded items on a push order guide and sending it out to the sales force so that it sorts the beginning of all of their screens. So every time they sit down with a customer and they open their laptop, the first items that are going to pop up are the items that we're trying to push out of our warehouse. Without the OMS and the WMS combination, there really would be no way to assume that. Great. Uh, can we go to the next topic? And this will be our, our last topic for today, but uh, we'll talk a little bit about slot optimization and uh, the, the pick, path, pick path improvements and how WMS played a role in that for, for Scaruzos. And John, let's talk about how the WMS has helped with your slot optimization and reducing the labor w within your four walls. So the, I think there's two major key points that we've seen, and, and what I like about this topic is it's not a traditional WMS topic, right? It's something that you can do with the data that's collected via the system. So slot optimization is allowing us to run replenishment effect, uh, efficiency reports. So uh, on a weekly basis, we print out the, uh, the audit by job RP or replenish job, and we look at slots that are violating you know, uh, what we would consider in more than one or two uh, um, visits per week. So, for instance, we had a slot location that we were visiting 66 times average on a weekly basis. We were able to make four pick slots or a super slot, you know, two full bays, and we reduced that to less than 20 replenishments per week. So now we're visiting that, you know, a third of the time, and that that replenisher, that stalker now is, is doing other jobs and is, way, you know, is more efficient at, at what he's doing. And he's touching the items that we really need to touch and not, you know, not the items that we sell a lot of. I think a lot of people struggle with the top end and the back end. So the top end is what items need to be super slotted and what items need to be consolidated into maybe a hand stack. It's really easy to run uh, a report sorted into Excel and say, okay, these 25 items need to be hand slotted, and then these 25 items need to be um, taken into a super slot, and then we can capture those line items, and then over the course of time, we can see if what we're doing is is helping the efficiency. So, are we really can, going back 20 times? Is there a reduction in overtime? Is there a reduction in hand stock slots? Because you know, if you're only selling one a month, or, or you know, or one every two months, one a quarter, there's really no need. If you put five or six in there, you're good for the entire year. So being able to track that to see if that actually, uh, if that actually occurring is, is big time for us. Um, the other, the other uh, key point here is pick path optimization. So we are a food service uh, company, and you know, the customer dictates the product mix. So as everyone else knows, as, as different manufacturers come in or as deals come in, as rebate programs, whatever the case may be, uh, the product mix will change. So 
what we've, what we've done with WMS in conjunction with our ERP is we're applying sales data against uh, slot max sizes and we're optimizing our pick path based on the products that we're actually moving. I actually have a pretty good case study. We brought on a, uh, a pretty significant amount of business over the summer and um, their product mix didn't really mix well into our current and so with a couple of months of data we sat back and, and it was taking us almost an hour to pull one of their dry pallets and I mean it's a 65 cube food service dry pallet. I mean it's it's as tall as you can get it and it's I mean it's it's a huge it's it's a pretty significant amount of business that we picked up. So we were able to move some slots forward and back and kind of looking at the way the volume and uh, the stackability, so stack factor of the product, the velocity of the product and the cube of the product uh, gave us the three criteria that we needed to optimize our dry picking path and those pick times are down to around 40 minutes or less for the same order same same picker, same selector, everything is basically the same other than the product in a different location. He's not making it all the way down the third or fourth aisle any longer. He's basically done with his pallets by the time he's rounding the second or third aisle uh, in cap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that, that's great to hear. And so uh, that uh, concludes our, uh, our Q&A there. So just looking, um, if anyone in the audience has any extra questions, we'll be taking questions in the questions pane. Um, there is one already, which is, can John, can you talk a little bit to um, the training of employees? Like, you know, did it take, before you had WMS, was it, was it longer to train them? Were they more efficient? Is it more efficient with WMS? Can you sort of touch on that? So I think what, what WMS brought to the table for us was a, a uniformity in our training procedures. So like most companies, when someone, a new employee starts, uh, unless they have a really dedicated job, they're kind of being cross-trained because they're usually with a senior staff member who is, you know, wearing multiple hats that's in charge of receiving but also does something else. Um, so what we were able to do was we defined uh, our, our warehouse into, you know, basically job types, and now we train to a job type. And WMS allows that because if you've seen the system, and it, uh, it's really broken down into the eight major things that mo that we do in operations. So you can you can scale up someone's new training uh, ability. So as they come in, you can stick them with your lead replenisher, and they just live in replenishment until they fully understand that system. And then as that as they understand that, you can branch them into uh, rotation, or you can branch them in back into re receiving or shipping or you know each one of the modules so it, it's kind of compartmentalized our training and it makes it more uh, uniform uniform and it makes it easier to implement per person as as they come on board and, and with and with a structure like um, a WMS system it, it, is it a more structured um, learning curve for employees compared with you know before a system where it was maybe more paper-based I would say there's a lot more accountability for for what the, what they're doing, um, everyone comes in with a different um, relationship with technology. Some people pick it up really relatively quickly. Some people do not. Right. Um, but when you compartmentalize it down to just a few screens, for instance, you really eliminate that learning curve. I mean, most people can pick up a few screens at a time. You know, for over the course of a few weeks, relatively uh, the same. And that's what I mean by you know uniformity is is we have one training mantra now that's broken into modules that everyone basically you know is, is learning at the same curve fortunately for us we don't have a, a huge turnover um, but we do have you know a few people here and there on that are constantly you know being um, trained in our facility and and you can kind of scale that up as your building grows and as your business grows as you bring on more employees you can you you, uh, you can compartmentalize that so it's not trying to drink water out of a fire hose you know you can you can you can compartmentalize the training that way Right, and and you know if you know if any of the audience want to take a look at Scarvuzo's website, one thing you'll see is that it really is a family-owned business. You know they have pictures of the, them at picnics and events, and it looks like a great place to work. Um, do you find that um, you have a situation where retention of employees with that sort of culture sort of helps, so they actually don't mind more of a learning curve because of you know that great f feel within the company? I think company culture is is paramount at this point. I think if you start your organization from the employee level and work your way up, 
um, you'll always be more successful because your employees will always take care of your customers and your vendors or, or you know, everyone else that's in that's in your uh, your business model. But what's interesting about Scavuzzo being in the fourth generation is the family members are scattered about. They're not they're not just executives. You know, they're in sales, they're in marketing, they're in uh, executive branch, they're in uh, transportation. So there's always someone that has a lineage back to the original, um, you know, beginnings of the company. And I, I think seeing that and seeing that those people still work in, in their departments and are, you know, um, sought after for advice and, you know, the, when the family member is the senior staff member, you kind of do it for the right reasons, if that makes any sense. Oh, no, absolutely, absolutely. I, I think in this, in the world we live in, company culture and work-life balance and, and feeling that you're part of something special is a real big deal. Well, John, thank you very much. And um, that concludes the questions from our audience. Um, if you want to feel free to follow up with John or Jordan, but, you know, please do. The information will be included in the deck that we will send out um, within a day um, when we actually encode this presentation. So on behalf of AFS, thank you so much for taking the time to participate in today's webinar. As a reminder, we will be sending out you an email with a link to today's downloadable presentation. Other complimentary resources are available at AFS Technologies at AFSI.com. Also, in, for everyone in the WMS supply chain area, we have a great AFS supply chain group on LinkedIn. Um, there's a link on Jordan's deck to actually join it there, or you can just go to LinkedIn and type in AFS WMS and you can find the, the group there. John, it'll be great to meet you when you come out to Phoenix. So again, thanks to everyone for joining us. Until next time, have a great rest of your week, and goodbye for now. Thank you, Ian. Thank you.